Uh, I want to take this opportunity to welcome all of you uh, to this presentation. Uh, as you are all aware, uh, there have been multiple changes that have taken place in the mortgage financing business over the last couple of weeks, and most of it is uh, taking place this Monday, plus uh, the reason for the seminar. Uh, from my point of view, um, these are probably the most cha changes in a very short period of time since I've been brokering, which, uh, which is over 15 years now. Uh, we hope that this presentation will give you uh, a better understanding of the changes so that you can modify your business plans accordingly if uh, necessary. Um, this, we're doing this presentation in three segments, but we encourage you, if you have any questions during the presentation, to just raise your hand and I'll bring up, uh, the microphone over and you can ask your questions uh, rather than waiting until the end of the presentation. Um, at this time, I would like, if you haven't, maybe to turn your cell phones to silent mode. Uh, so that uh, we don't get interrupted, and we're going to get started. And I think first up will be Maury. So Maury, take it away. Okay, can everybody hear me without this? Yeah, I think so, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So what the hell is going on? Well, hopefully today we'll try and address these questions. So uh, today what we're going to cover is a uh, quick intro of just making sure that we understand the difference between high ratio and conventional, because that's going to kind of set up explaining the changes and making sure when you know the changes apply and don't. Uh, there is a set of government mandated changes that we're going to be going over uh, and that will be followed by the insurers have some changes that they'll be setting up uh, for some of their programs, uh, specifically self-employed and rental programs and that's pretty much going to wrap it up and we're going to have questions at the end but also as we're going through to try and make sure we cover each topic and it's clear, if you have a question uh, please ask it when you have it. Okay, so starting out here, uh, the high ratio conventional, so uh, by definition when a deal is defined as high ratio whenever the, there's less than 20% uh, down payment going into the deal, okay? So this is the same definition at all banks and when there's less than 20% the deal has to be insured. It can be insured by any one of the three insurance companies we have in Canada. CMHC is uh, by far the, the largest one used, but Genworth is second and there is also AIG. So the bank typically decides, the bank usually develops a relationship with one or two of the insurance companies uh, and they typically choose where the deal will best fit at the insurance company. But they're all pretty much the same, the fees are the same, it's pretty much blind to the client for all intents and purposes, but there are three in Canada. Uh, and then conventional is where there's more than 20% in the deal. So just two kind of broad uh, categories of deal, high ratio and conventional, okay? Uh, so we wanted to set that up because the government mandated changes, these apply to all deals at all banks, at all insurance companies when there's less than 20% down, okay? So uh, the first change is there's a new maximum amount someone could refinance their property to, okay? So we'll go over that more in a second here. The second change is to how the banks and insurance companies are going to determine the amount someone can qualify for, the amount of the mortgage. Okay, so this is changing. And then the third change is uh, there is a new minimum down payment requirement for a non-owner occupied rental property. Okay, and there is one common misconception that is commonly asked when the, about the changes is a new minimum down payment. If someone's going to live in the property, there's no change to this. So if someone's going to buy a house and they're going to live in it, uh, there's no change. They can still buy with as little as 5% down. Okay? So the first change, the maximum refinance amount. It is, the, the limit now is 90%. So if someone has a mortgage, uh, has a house, they've had it for a while, maybe they've done rentals, they want to take equity out, they can now only go to 90% of the property's value at the time that they want to do it. Before it was 95% they could go up to. So uh, this was kind of more put in place to address some problems we've seen in, in the States more than Canada where the market took property values up. People just kind of refinancing every year and they weren't really doing anything to the property but kind of treating their house like a bank account. Um, so it's to discourage this. Uh, but in Canada, uh, this product was not really used. People were never really taking, they might have been refinancing, but they were never taking it up to the, to the max for the most part, 95%. So 
a change, but probably something that won't affect most people. Uh, so this is a, this is a more significant change. And it's the rate that's going to be used to determine how much people can qualify for a mortgage. So uh, there's a couple situations. This is the first one. So if someone is going to be taking or would like to take a fixed rate mortgage of less than five years, a term of less than five years, or if they wanted any variable rate mortgage, okay, this is what they have to do. And they have to, to qualify for the amount they want using the Government of Canada benchmark posted rate, okay? And right now it's 585, okay? So I put versus 385 there because uh, before today, someone could qualify for a variable rate mortgage using a much lower rate than they're gonna be forced to now. So if they wanna qualify for a $500,000 loan and they want a, a variable rate mortgage, they're gonna have to try and qualify for the mortgage using that higher rate. Okay? We'll go into an example in a second. You can see some numbers. Uh, so this, the second case of someone is someone says, no, forget it. I'm just happy with a five-year fixed rate term, or I'm going to take any term longer than five years with a fixed rate. Guess what? You can use the rate, it's the contract rate, the discounted rate, the rate that they're actually going to get for their mortgage. Okay? So clearly you can see here there is um, the, the point of using this higher rate, even though someone might be taking a product that gives a lower rate, uh, the government really wants to make sure someone's going to be able to afford their payment you know, over a significant amount of time. So everybody knows we've had record low rates. Variable rates are like bottom basement, right? So they're only going to go up and, and there kind of wants to be some insurances in place that people are going to afford their mortgage if it goes up by... 2% if they're on a variable or if they have to renew in a year, rates have gone up, that they, they're, that they have comfort that they're going to know they're going to be able to make the payments at time of renewal. Okay? Uh, so the example. So uh, this example, it's uh, what numbers we're going to use is we're going to use someone that has a gross annual income of 60 grand a year. Uh, I use average property taxes amount, uh, heat, and I'm assuming they have no other debts, like a car loan, student loan, stuff like that. So the old max, uh, meaning that 385 rate, so if someone was taking a variable rate mortgage or something, yesterday, uh, this person, uh, or these two people, or whatever it is, could have qualified for a mortgage amount, not a purchase price, a mortgage amount of 439, okay? So if this person today says, I still want a variable rate mortgage, but I have to qualify for this thing under the new uh, guidelines, the 585, they're only going to be able to qualify for a mortgage of 342. They can still have a variable rate mortgage, but the amount that they could get if they want a variable or a term less than five years is much lower. Okay? But then there is some saving grace here. Then if, if you say, you know, forget it, I'll take a five year fix because then I can qualify for it with the rate I'm going to get, they can, they can qualify for a mortgage of 396. So clearly, uh, especially in Vancouver, there's going to be a, a, a pressure, a funnel, I would say, to more people maybe taking a five-year fix uh, in order to qualify for the amount they need. Uh, may not be a huge deal for a lot of people. There is a clear preference in, in Canada for five-year fix, but we all know that everybody doesn't uh, take a five-year fix. Okay, so um, it's just kind of how the numbers line up with the qualifications. So any, any, any questions on this one? No? Nope. Okay, so the last...